You're an experimentalist by background, aren't you? Empirical scientist by training. Right. What was the... It was material science, right? Mm -hmm. and as the, I think, I think you do, point being that, that we've, we've come at this thing uh, as cleanly and as sparsely and empirically as we can. I mean, this work, the idea was to say, could we just strip all the philosophy out, all the teachings, no magic books, uh, no teachers, just have experiments you could just run yourself and just try them out. Right. See how far you can get. And that's what was attractive to me because I come from a background in philosophy, basically. Yeah. And so I had, uh, you know, looked at all the different traditions and I was f starting to find some persistent patterns that I was interested in. Mm -hmm. But the way in which you test those patterns is by having arguments with other yeah. <laughs> philosophers. Who's rather... the best arguer is? Oh, I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, and, and, and there's something very unsatisfying about that, right? In other words, you can win a philosophical argument and lose the game entirely because the game is to investigate the actual nature of mind and the way in which we change mm -hmm. our experience of mind. Mm -hmm. uh, so this experimental uh, you know, practice that... Uh, you know, I've learned in part from you is really uh, fundamental and it means that there's no teaching really. Mm -hmm. there, there's nothing that you do because it says do it. so in a book, okay. right? It's nice that there are books that seem to resonate mm -hmm. with what it is we're saying. There's no uh, one practice that definitely is definitively the way, right. right? There is no way anybody else can ever tell you what it is your own practice is. Mm -hmm. All they can do is guide you to practices that have worked for them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as is the case with every other experiment that is worthy of the name, they have to be repeated. Mm -hmm. You know, they must be repeatable. Mm -hmm. um, it won't do to just have a kind of one-off experience. Oh, yeah, well, I, experienced, I experienced pure consciousness. Uh, well, so something that's really important, too, this is basically a DIY. Mm -hmm. do, it, do it yourself. And so you need a feedback mechanism. Mm -hmm. And the one uh, good thing about this practice, I think useful thing about the practice, is that what you focus on is this self-referential internal narrative. And it goes on all the time in almost everybody's brain. So you've got a ready, at hand, inexpensive, albeit free, feedback tool to see if, in fact, your experiment's working. You try your experiment, you look. Has it changed? Is it less energetic? Is it more problematic? Now, is it modified at all? Have I have lost any kind of a number of thoughts per hour or anything? So you've got your automatic DIY feedback thing. That was also, I thought, really important to make sure that it was contemporary people. People who've been alive while we've been alive. So you can say, well, okay, this is not passed down through 2,000, 2,500 years, passed down through four languages, and God knows how many, you know, revisionists to get to me today. Like, you can go and look at videos of these people. You can see pictures of them. You can meet people actually write them down. You can meet people who actually talk to them. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, you have to rely on any hope that, in fact, you're getting the right version of what was said. You know exactly what was said. Right. It's not true because it's old. No, no. On <laughs> the contrary. You know, is it true because it's new? How come nobody found it before? So, I mean, it does, you know, push you right into the moment of, yes, we can experiment this thing. And believing you can find this way by no teachings, no philosophy, just by your own experiments. Now it can sound, when you use the word experiment and your mind <laughs> in the same sentence, yes. it can sound frightening, yes. right? Um, and uh, so I think it, you know, may be worth talking about, you know, what people can expect to be in for. Well, and I think you, you touched on it. The important thing is recognizing that this may be not a uniformly smooth journey. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got a brain with uh, 100 billion neurons and fitzroy and synaptic interconnections that some parts of those are going to be reorganized somewhat. And they are going to come out uniformly. So you may see a network start to you know, become no longer valuable. And the brain then re changes its purpose, repurposes that circuit. And as it does, you may get a shot of some old memory, some old fear you had that oh, it was back there and you didn't know this. And so it'll, it'll be bumpy, but it does get, you know, prog prog progress can be made, but it will not be uniformly smooth. So then the first protocol for the experimental method needs to be, first of all, become aware that there are fish in the aquarium, as it were. Oh, yes, in other words, fish in the aquarium. become aware by observing your own thoughts that there is that inner narrative there. Mm -hmm. 
and then look at the suite of techniques that are available to uh, dwindle mm -hmm. that inner narrative. Mm -hmm. Check and see if those techniques are affecting the inner narrative. Mm -hmm. If yes, mm -hmm. proceed. Mm -hmm. If no, try different technique or try more often right. or... Right. Yeah, I think it's important. You, you just hit on, on many techniques. You know, yeah. What, what everybody finds is that you know, the eye, this eye ego you're trying to look at and inquire about and see what its nature is, is very clever and crafty. It wants to stick around and keep its job. And so one, you might try one approach and you find out, in fact, it can't go any further. You know, it's found a way to blunt that. So you've got to sneak around some other way and come in with another, maybe similar, but different approach. And it'll be able to make an incursion into the structure of the eye before the eye can run around and block it off. Eventually, you'll have put enough incursions into the eye that, in fact, it won't be able to reconstruct itself enough to persist. Right. So, for example, um, in realizing that the eye is a fictional construct, sometimes it can feel as though, wow, you know, I am the creator of my own experience. I'm the director. I'm the playwright. I'm the producer. And that can feel both at once very tempting mm -hmm. and also very uh, awful in its level of responsibility. Like mm -hmm. you have this responsibility uh, to be who you are. So I personally found that it was important to um, have that fictional character, in fact, surrender mm -hmm. uh, to something much larger than itself, you know, we, whatever we want to think of that larger entity being. Mm -hmm. The important thing was that, that larger entity was compelling enough that I could surrender that fictional construct. All, otherwise, you get stuck at that level of fictional construct. Yeah, the part of realization is that there is, there may be something there, and you come into it by degrees. You begin, you start the surrendering process, and you say, oh, this is dangerous. And you find out, no, well, it wasn't dangerous at all. I mm -hmm. surrendered this thing, mm -hmm. little thing, and it wasn't a problem. Well, no, that's okay. And you just work your way incrementally into more and more surrendering. You find that the more you let go, somehow, and this gets woo-woo, is somehow there's a strong sense of support. There's a strong sense of okayness about this surrendering process. It's not dangerous. Nothing bad is happening to you because of this. It feels good as you surrender. Actually, get some neurotransmitters released as you begin to see things loosening up. So it is supported by the brain, supported by the neurochemistry, and but you do it incrementally. And and maybe the reason why that uh, occurs that way, oh, uh, is <laughs> that uh, you know we when we surrender, we're really not surrendering anything, but our consciousness concerning something. It's well, a construct yeah. we have. Exactly. So, Story, like, something. so it's not like so. I'm giving up my job. No, I'm giving up my attachment to, to the job. job, and the consciousness of my job can't possibly be dangerous, except insofar as I'm holding on to it. That's right. Right. So, what what's dangerous about it is not like oh, all of a sudden I'm going to give away all my stuff to some guru or something. Right. To the contrary, what's going to happen is I'm going to release all of these things that are feeding my inner narrative. That's right. And one way to think about why it feels like there's something there, the more we release and let go, it feels like there's something there. It's because the more we release and let go, the more we're actually in pure consciousness. Mm -hmm. Because the less we're filling pure consciousness with some kind of content, some junk food content, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the more time you spend in pure consciousness, the more, frankly, at home you feel. It, it, it feels like you're home. Well, it, ha it, it has to be be that way, it wouldn't work. I mean, mm. if this was such a horrible, uh, unusual, strange place, it, this wouldn't work. But it turns out that's what you feel, as you actually described. Mm. It begins to open up and it does feel like home. It mm. does feel like you're returning home. You're not going to a strange place. You're coming back home again. And it feels such a sweet thing. And think, well, this isn't going to be dangerous. This is, I was afraid of this place, but I find I'm just going back home again. And you feel more and more valid and more and more uh, attached, not attached, but more and more integral. I mean, you become as one thing, piece by piece. But you can see yourself getting more and more holistic all the time. Right, and you start to see the way in which all the parts of your life that you thought you were orchestrating or failing to orchestrate were really just coming into being and passing, passing out, through. Passing through. Yeah. And in pure consciousness, you can sort of 
hang out and be part of the adventure without getting caught up in the adventure yeah. in the same way that you did before. Well, the important distinction you made was about it, it's attachment to things that's the problem, not mm -hmm. the things themselves. There's nothing wrong with your car. Mm -hmm. If you're heavily attached to it, you will suffer. Yeah. Because of the attachment yeah. to that oh, car. No. You just point. got something on it. You just there's some dust on it. <laughs> bird. Stand away from bird the car. Scratch the head of scratch I've got car. to kill all birds. <laughs> Otherwise. Exactly. <laughs> and, and the same thing with your relationships. Yeah. You don't push the people away. Mm -hmm. You just recognize that, in fact, you may be deeply attached to that. And it's probably constraining your ability to be fresh and new in that relationship. Mm -hmm. So you're only seeing it through the eyes of the story that you're maintaining about this relationship. And what we're saying is, no, if you can get out of the way, a whole new kind of relationship can take place between you and the other person. Because you aren't running out of this model. Right, so you can experiment your way into exactly. entirely exactly. new exactly. life. Yeah. Now, it can be helpful, I have found, to then be able to be in dialogue with other people Absolutely. that are engaged in this. Right. Yeah. But again, another protocol needs to be that nobody else really knows what anybody else it's is really going thing. through. No, yeah. no, you really don't. Yeah. It, it, it's really a, your personal subjective thing. Yeah. And the most you can do is kind of triangulate on what the rose smells like. Mm -hmm. You know, it smells like this, but not like that. It tastes like this, but not like that. So you're just kind of helping them try to flesh out the idea for themselves, as well as to try to communicate it to you and see if it can be validated at some level. Although it can't be totally validated ever. Right, but especially since, uh, well, except for by the self. Yeah, but by yourself. Yeah, yeah. self-validated. Right. But uh, because there are, there are definitely patterns of, you know, patterns and pitfalls, right? Oh. In other words, like I... I find that I'm able to learn from other people having gone along this path. Mm -hmm. And I find that by saying, oh, yes, you know, when I uh, realized, you know, that I had given up everything, I'd surrendered everything except for those things that were really the closest to me, mm -hmm. like my family mm -hmm. and my job, mm -hmm. that that was the most difficult point. But I was also able to see that what I was really surrendering were neither of those things, only my consciousness of those things, mm -hmm. my attachment to those things. Well, as you just begin this running process, say for your job or something, you can see how your job changes. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the way you go into your job changes as you surrender even little pieces of mm -hmm. it. And so you become more effective in your job. So mm -hmm. you say, well, this is a good process. Mm -hmm. I'm not you know, losing my job, my salary's not going down. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm functioning better at the workplace. We don't have so much fight, not so much conflict. I, uh, work in meetings better. I'm more mm -hmm. present for the meetings. Mm -hmm. So it gets better very quickly. It's it not, really does. Yeah. I think there is an initial period where the experimentalist has to be, you know, persistent and, mm -hmm. and even, you know, just try again, yeah. even if it gets bumpy. But there's definitely a very rapid return right. on breaking even a little bit right. with any of your stories about any of your most cherished attachments. Yeah. You know, I think the only faith it takes is, is just say, I'll try this experiment. That's it. Yeah. You know, I've got this experimental book. I'll just run the experiment and see if it works or not. Right. It's no more than that. Right. When you do, then things start to happen to reinforce that very quickly. Mm -hmm. Experiment on. Experiment on.